And the Prophet ﷺ said something very interesting about the time right before Al Masih al Dajjal appears. May Allah Azza wa protect us from his fitna. Allahumma ameen. So the Prophet ﷺ tells us something very interesting that before the appearance of Al Dajjal, there is a certain desperation that precedes that. You see, when people are desperate, then they're more vulnerable and they can be exploited. And that's a dangerous combination. But the stars of this ummah shine in its most difficult times. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right before a dajjal appears, he said there will be thalat sanawat shidad yusibu nasa fiha ju'un shadid. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that three years before a dajjal appears, there will be complete drought, a severe drought that strikes the people. And people will be struck with severe hunger. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the first of those three years, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will command the skies to hold one third of its rain and the earth to hold one third of its produce. So one third of the rain, one third of the produce, a decline in what comes from the heavens and a decline in what's produced from the earth by one third. Then he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the second year, Allah Azza wa Jal will command it to hold two thirds. Two thirds of the rain will be held, two thirds of the produce will be held. Can you imagine now if you play this out, the desperation of mankind as this starts to unfold. Then he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the third year, Allah Azza wa Jal will withhold the rain so not a single drop of rain will fall for an entire year. And the earth will completely withhold its produce. Can you imagine a year of global drought? A year where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let a single drop of rain fall. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ You know in Surah Al-Mulk where Allah Azza wa Jal talks about people that use the means by which they're supposed to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instead instill in themselves a sense of arrogance and pride. Al-Af'ida wa sam'a wa al-Basr your faculty to think, your seeing, your, your hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights the desperation. He says, you know, uh, who's holding these birds in the sky? If you're looking at a tayr, who do you think is holding these birds in the sky and giving them this ability? And as human beings, you take things for granted. And you start to think you're so advanced. And subhanAllah, look at California of all places where all of these new technologies are being produced, what happens when a drought hits California? What happens when Allah withholds? Okay, as advanced as you want to get, create all the technologies that you can, all by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if Allah holds back the water from you, what are you going to do? You might figure out something creative, alternative water for some time to survive. You might come up with some new technology. But what will you do if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds the water from you? And so this humbles mankind across the board when Allah commands for a whole year that water does not fall from the sky, rain does not fall from the sky. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلَا تَبْقَى ذَاتُ ضِلْفٍ إِلَّا هَلَكَتْ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all of the hooved animals, meaning the sheep, the cattle, um, the pigs, the deer, all of the hooved animals will die except for a few that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to survive. So where do you even get your meat from now? Where do you, how do you survive from your food? So you don't have food, you don't have your drink. And the Prophet ﷺ was asked by the companions as he was narrating this, قَالُوا فَمَا يُعِيشُ النَّاسَ فِي ذَلِكَ الزَّمَانِ Ya Rasulullah, how will people live in that time? How will people survive? And this is a powerful response that the Prophet ﷺ gives. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aht at Tahlilu, what Takbiru, what Tahmeet. La ilaha illallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa yujzi udharika alayhim majzat al taham. That in that time, your tasbih will take the place of your food. Think about this. You could feel a sense of suffocation. And Allah teaches you another lesson. That if Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to be sustained even physically by Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah Azza wa Jal will make that happen. Even if you don't have water, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to change the way that you operate as a human being so that he can sustain you, he will sustain you with dhikr. He'll sustain you with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you talk about people literally feeling a sense of suffocation and Allah turning their dhikr into breathing. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha Allah, Allahu Akbar. What Shaykh al-Islam and Taymiyyah rahimahullah said is like uh, water is to the fish, oxygen to the human being, that is dhikr to the heart. Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al even till now. Dhikr is what settles the heart and gives you tranquility in a way that nothing else can. If you feel yourself suffocating, if you feel the constriction of the chest, if you feel like you can't move, you can't operate due to the global circumstances or due to the circumstances in your own home. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ When you turn away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things become constricted, tight. But dhikr opens the pathways. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the pathways so much so that in the worst of times to strike mankind, dhikr will literally be your food and your drink. Subhanallah. That's what it will become to us. But the greater lesson, or of the greater lessons, is first and foremost, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not burden a soul beyond its scope. Even then, Allah will provide a way out. Allah does not burden us beyond our scope. He gives us what we can handle and He gives us the tools of success. Otherwise, we're not accountable. But when we have the tools of success, then we become accountable. Also, that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of madness is the only way that a person can survive. And remembering Allah does not simply mean repetition on the tongue. Remembering who Allah is as you remember Him with your tongue and thinking deeply about what you're saying when you remember him with your tongue. And then allowing that to penetrate your heart when you remember him with your tongue. That opens the pathways, it allows you to breathe, to not suffocate when things are happening. Alhamdulillah, Allah is in control. Subhanallah, tabarakallah. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you walk out of the door, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. You're already acknowledging that whatever it is that I'm leaving my house to do, I trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be the one to provide sustenance for me, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be my protector, that Allah is going to be my provider, and that if anything happens in the system that I perceive to be different, Allah azza wa jal has the keys. And so I'll continue to renew my trust in Him. What dhikr does to allow a person to not be paralyzed and not be suffocated is tremendous. And by the way, you will not understand this unless you've experienced it. Someone might be thinking to themselves, oh, here they go again, dhikr, uthkurullah, whatever. Really? You, you know, so if I repeat this, you will not understand the hal of ahl dhikr until you become one of them. The station of the people of remembrance until you immerse yourself in remembrance and become one of them. That's the only way you're going to understand the way that it truly allows you to navigate the madness of this world. Otherwise, you're a person looking in from outside and you can't understand the experience. It's like you don't know the temperature of a place unless you're inside of it. But you could tell that it must be cool if the people are not sweating. And so you don't understand the, had, the, the, the place of Ahl al-Dhikr, the place of the people of remembrance. May Allah make all of us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. You were in the last 10 nights and you were in the masjid remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The temperature, how did it feel? How did your heart feel when you were in that state of dhikr? That's not something that's reserved for Ramadan. That's something we reserve for Ramadan. So how do we overcome this sense of paralysis and how do we undercome, overcome this sense of suffocation in the midst of distress? Number one, الذكر والدعاء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل سبحان الله look at the connection between these things oh Allah I seek refuge in you from الهم anxiety about what is to come والحزن grief over what has passed والعجز to be paralyzed into inaction والكسل to be lazy to be struck by laziness هم and حزن if a person dwells too much in anxiety and grief then they're unable to have the opposite of al-ajz wal kasal incapacity and laziness. So you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah azza wa jalla to unlock those things for you. The next thing we learn from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
is that where there is confusion, there is always a certain course of action. ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk. The Prophet ﷺ said, leave that which causes you doubt and immerse yourself in that which causes you no doubt. Meaning when there is something that's confusing to you, because fitna can become very confusing, and you don't know, you're unable to sort things out properly, you're unable to figure out the best course of action, then exert yourself in a place where you know that your course of action will be blessed. But don't stop exerting yourself. Badiru bil amal salihah The Prophet ﷺ says, as fitna comes towards you, rush to do good deeds. Rush to do good deeds. And we also learn from our beloved Messenger وسلم, the importance of setting achievable goals in the midst of it all. We're a goal-oriented creation. As human beings, when we don't feel like we are useful, then we find ourselves falling into that sense of worthlessness. And the only way that you can consistently renew your sense of self-worth is to keep on setting goals for yourself, achievable goals. And keep on taking that next step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you take one step towards Allah azza wa jal, He comes to you much quicker. And that feeling, just like a dhikr, becomes a lot closer to you and opens up doors for you. So set achievable goals for yourself. The next thing we learn from the Prophet ﷺ is to solve problems that are within our capacity. مَنْ قَالَ هَلَكَ النَّاسِ فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says the people are done is the one who is causing them to be that way. Oh, أَهْلَكَهُمْ In one narration, he is the worst of them, the most perished of them. When people look around the world, you know, they talk about them now, they, they, they call them keyboard analysts or keyboard warriors. You know, think before there were keyboards, there are the people that always look at the situation of the world and talk about how terrible it is. And they did absolutely nothing to solve anything of the world. So there is problems in the masjid. Forget about the masjid. Why don't you get involved? Because the masjid is full of this and this and that. Not your masjid, of course. But the masajid are this and this and that. You know, or why don't you uh, get involved with this? What's the good of this? What's the point of doing this? What's the point of doing that? Because if you do this much, they're doing that much. And so you can't make any real changes. So that person that always is negative and that always finds a hole in a course of action is someone who never does anything for themselves and becomes the most accountable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they're deflated on the inside and they deflate everybody else. Solve the problems within your capacity. And that is going to help you bi ta'ala unlock something with the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's far greater. Most great people didn't realize that they were great until after they died. This is, this is something that you have an opportunity to do bi ta'ala, so solve the problems that are within your capacity. We also take from our beloved Messenger وسلم, this idea of making our breaks intentional and counting our breaks as ibadah. Look, we live in a world that tells you you have to constantly do, 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 do. But when you take a step back and you don't, that can be ibadah in and of itself. Your sleep can be ibadah in and of itself. To sometimes take a moment and pause is in and of itself an act of worship. And so sometimes you feel like even when something is happening in the world, if I don't hurry up and weigh in on this WhatsApp group, then everything's going to fall apart. I have to hurry up and act, 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 act. Be intentional about taking a step back and recalibrating and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will allow you to be better equipped to face the problems as they are arising in your midst. How wonderful is the affair of the believer. That everything that happens to him is good. And that's only for the believer. Now I want you to think about this. The Prophet ﷺ taught us about how difficult the last times are. How difficult the end of times are. But he put this opportunity ahead of us, alayhi salatu wassalam. He said that those people that will be with Isa alayhi salam are the best of this ummah, right next to the sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ. There is an opportunity to rise. Even in the, in the most difficult of times that will strike this earth, there is an opportunity to rise to be amongst the most favorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when the Prophet ﷺ mentions the increase in the challenge, he mentions the increase in the opportunity. That behind you or what comes after you, O companions, are days that require great patience. That patience in those days is like holding on to a burning hot coal. But the one who acts in those days has the ajr of 50. Has the reward of 50 people. 50 of them, Ya Rasulullah? No, 50 of you. So as the challenge rises, the opportunity to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
rises as well. Dear brothers and sisters, when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances and when the global challenges around us become so difficult, and when we find our personal stress as well growing, remember to do the good that you know how to do, to speak the truth that you know how to speak, to avoid the falsehood that you know is falsehood, and to avoid acting in confusion and uncertainty. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all along and ground yourself, ground yourself in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in the remembrance of Allah we have clarity and in the remembrance of Allah we have a course of action and in the remembrance of Allah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala we have a special place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter may Allah make us amongst the dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat to those who remember Allah frequently from the men and from the women and make us amongst those who perform good deeds frequently from the men and from the women and keep us sincere Allahumma ameen aqulu qawli hadha